Hi there, my name is Memo, this is my channel, House Planty Goodness, and essentially it's a place where I like to geek out about my big passion, which you might be able to see behind me and around me, I talk about tropical houseplants. And today we're going on the continuation of the plant review series, but I've got an anthurium for you today. Now, I'll lay the groundwork as well for this, like I do for most of these videos, the people that are coming back and they're used to it, just skip ahead to when the review starts, but some ground rules. A lot of this is my personal experience in my environment, so it's biased to what I have found. Now, as I always do with all of these videos, if you've got this plant and you've had it for a while and you want to share your experience down below, please do, because eventually what I'm hoping to do, because there's not a lot of videos like this online that I could find, especially for longer term um, ownership of these plants, Drop it down below like you would an Amazon review. It doesn't have to be particularly long. Talk about what worked for you, what didn't work for you, all of these things. Be as detailed or as little detail as you want to be in the comments. And hopefully what will happen because of this is that it will become um, a place of repository essentially for if somebody's searching to find out a bit more about a plant before they get it, they can find it on these videos down in the comments down below. But yeah. The other thing to note as well about how some of these plants have grown in my care is the fact that a lot of these have moved three different times to three different locations with three different growing environments. It's only now, and I'm coming up to, I think it's been a year since they've been here now. Yes, March is when I moved. It's been a year since I've been in here. So they've been in the conservatory with the good level of light and top down lighting and the high temperatures and the humidity level at the level that it is. But before then, they were in previous properties which had lower light levels. It was just getting in from the windows. It had lower humidity. So I can usually talk about different aspects of how it did in different conditions. But the other thing as well to bear in mind with these things is that I have had some of these plants for a while. And again, it comes back to what we we're talking about before. It's gonna be biased to my opinion. The other thing is there's an, a section on availability and pricing and how available it was. And that's relevant to the time where I'm posting this video. So if you're looking at this kind of going, ah, it doesn't stack up. It's very different right now. Check the date of the video, especially if you're looking at this a couple of years later, things have probably changed. But at the time of filming, this is what the situation was essentially. But the, some of the topics that I will cover in these reviews are things like ease of propagation, speed of growth, background on the plant, and availability when I got it, any pest pressures, and then I will usually do uh, final thoughts, which I will give a score out of 10 and say if I would buy this plant again, knowing what I know now. So enough of the intro, let's dive into background. Right, and I've bought the plant in front of me and you can see why I don't move this plant very often. This is the Anthurium crystallinum. And this is something we can talk about in the background. Obviously it's looking a bit ruffled at the moment. Look at that inflorescence. It's doing a corkscrew. It was behind the shelf. I don't know it was doing that. I probably won't be pollinating it right now because I've probably got about 200 seedlings from this plant from last year that are still growing. So <laughs> I don't need any more. Um, but you might be able to see if I turn it around, you can see that it's actually pupped. There's a second little plantlet in there and this is the parent plant. And the reason why I don't usually move this plant around too much, and let me give you a head test just for good measure. And I think that's not the largest leaf. Which one is the largest leaf? This one. Mm, sorry, you're looking at me looking at leaves. Uh, maybe this one. And as I said, it's kind of curling up again because it just needs a bit of watering. But that is something really interesting that I have found with this plant is that it can dry out. Unlike a lot of other anthuriums where it might throw a bit of a hissy fit, this plant will dry out. Not for too long, otherwise it does start going a bit curly, but it's it can take it because leaves are relatively thick and they are slightly velvety. So that is that about this plant. Let me just put it down slightly. I'll bring it up again when I'm showing other bits, but it's very heavy basically. So let me put it down. So the thing to note 
about that plant and the people that have been here for a while, they've probably seen other videos about it. When I first bought it, it was sold to me as a seedling, maybe a slightly more mature seedling of a cross between Clarinervium and Forgetii. As this plant has grown, it has shown no indication of either one of those parents. And I don't know if other people have bought them. There was a specific eBay seller that some of us did buy from in the UK. And I don't know if a lot of people have still got those plants, but I'm pretty sure this is just a Crystallinum. And based on what I've heard from other people, it seems like it's just a Crystallinum. I've also got the seedlings of this plant propagated within itself, and I'm not getting, even at the early leaf stages, I'm not getting any of the Forgetii in it at all, and I'm getting way too much silver for it to be uh, Clarinervium. Also with the Clarinervium, the leaves are much, much thicker and much more cardboard-like than this one is. So this leads me to think that this is actually a Crystallinum, and based on what other people have said, I think a lot of people would agree, especially people that have actually got something that is a uh, crystallinum that they bought as a crystallinum. So, yeah. But interesting thing with this plant, I probably got it, I'd say over two years ago now, It'd just be just over two years ago now. Oh, the, the video title will probably have that there. And I'll see if I can put an image there. And I usually do with these reviews. And this is <laughs> it's not an Instagram worthy picture. I usually take a snap of these plants when they come into my care to put into my plant care app and it's a bit rough and ready so but it hopefully it's probably the earliest picture i have of this plant when it first got to me uh, and as i always do with these videos i'll put a link at the top as well i've done a different video about my plant care app if you want to have a look at that as well but yeah this plant has been with me for a while possibly one of my easiest anthuriums i will say that um, it's not particularly fussy, it just keeps on going on. The reason why you've not seen it recently in a lot of these videos is because it's on a shelf and the way that the leaves grew in, it was very difficult to move out. The leaves have kind of moved a bit since in the last year or so, so I'm able to get it back out again, but I do have a lot of plants that have grown into the shelves. So it makes things really difficult to kind of move things around, especially with some of my larger plants. You might be showing me you might be seeing me show some smaller plants more often. It, it's because it's easier to move them in front of the camera rather than some of these big honking beasts, basically, that might be behind shelves. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, really good. It does, if something, if this is a plant that you might want to be thinking about pollinating, I can vouch for this one specifically. It bloomed about six or seven times during the summer. I didn't pollinated every time because as I said I've got way too many seeds already but it does it bloom for me quite freely and as as you saw it has also pupped and this is the only anthurium I think so far that has pupped for me as well granted it's it's become more mature um I know there was a comment on one of the previous videos that was talking about do I suggest support sticks or moss poles for some of these plants obviously with most anthuriums they're quite a compact growth habit before I have not seen any of my Ethereum start to climb yet. I will usually put a collar, and ironically enough, this one doesn't. Meh. I need to double check that actually. Uh, I will put a collar of sphagnum moss, of dampened sphagnum moss, because it replicates what they might be if they're attaching themselves to a tree. And even when I've done that, I've not had much of a need to give it very much support. This has got the smallest, <laughs> I'll bring it up and show you for the size of the plant, that's how small the support stick is, just so it can basically help hold it up a bit more. But very, very cool plant. You might be able to see there's some cosmetic damage on the leaves. It might be because I wasn't able to move it, so it's getting a bit too much light. But very, very, very awesome plant. And it did grow big leaves very quickly. I think this is possibly one of the biggest leaves that I have in terms of the kind of heart shape and theoriums. Now, I think that's everything I wanted to say about the background of this plant. Let's move on to the next topic. So speed of growth, and I alluded to this a bit earlier on. Relatively fast plant, actually, for an anthurium and a consistent grower for me as well. I will say this, and I think I've shared this on another one of my videos, 
I'm not great with easy plants. And I know a lot of people were just like, get a Clarinervium first, because it's really, really easy out of the anthuriums generally, and try that out first and see how you do with it. <laughs> I could not keep a Clarinervium happy. I do better with the harder plants generally. But this plant has pretty much just kept on going on since I first got it. This also links back to a video that I did on heat mats, and I'll link it up there at the top. This when I first got, I acclimated it to my condition on a heat mat. It started to show early signs of struggle, and it can be quite an expressive plant, I found. Um, so I took it off, and it did really fine. It moved to a different location. It had uh, better light levels, less scorching heat underneath the soil, and it did really, really well. It does grow quite fast, and I will say almost one of my fastest growing anthuriums. As you can see, it also keeps quite a few of its leaves, at least in my experience. A lot of anthuriums that you'll get in most household environments will usually only able to keep two or three leaves. Does it keep as many leaves now that they're getting huge? Probably not. Um, but be before, I think for the first year, I didn't lose a leaf and it just kept bringing out new leaves. So, I don't know. Um, in terms of speed of growth as well, and everybody wants me to benchmark against maybe um, Pothos, and I'm looking down at my golden Pothos. How does it compare? It doesn't do very much in the winter, as most of my anthuriums don't do very much growth in the winter, but in the summer, or in the spring and summer months when it starts getting brighter and warmer, it will, this one will probably get about a leaf, one, one leaf a month, basically. And then with a pothos, for instance, I might get two or maybe three leaves in that month, in that warmer period when it's sunnier as well. So that gives you a bit of a benchmark there in terms of speed of growth, but generally quite fast for an anthurium. I will caveat that, that for an anthurium, it's relatively fast and consistent. Ease of propagation with this one. And I've mentioned that I've pollinated it. I've never done cutting propagation for this. And actually, I still haven't ever attempted to do a cutting propagation for any of my anthuriums. And I know a lot of people said it's quite easy. I don't know, I think I'm a bit shy on that topic at the moment because I did buy a chonk from, what was it, a regal that died a death. It didn't do very much. I did everything that everybody was saying to do with the, the kind of chunk propagation, and I know chunk propagations are always a bit of a hit and miss, even more so with anthuriums that can be a bit temperamental. Mm, I didn't get it to grow. This one, as I said, it pupped. It tells you something when I've had no other anthurium pup, this one did. And <laughs> pollination, <laughs> super easy. Because, and I think I've done another video, if I can find it again, I'll link it. But with the anthurium pollination, usually, the stage where it's receptive as the female stage which is receptive doesn't last as long or it's difficult to get it right because you need to do it towards the end of the evening or early morning and the the male stage generally isn't a problem but trying to get that there this one was okay it was quite consistent it was quite easy to pollinate it took to seed quite quickly the seeds grew quite quickly unlike the vitarifolium which took for ever to mature those seeds. They also are taking forever to grow out. Uh, the seeds did grow quite quickly with this. They kind of stalled a bit when I was kind of growing the little seedlings. But I think that was more to do with it is in the middle of the winter and um, the conditions probably weren't as ideal. I've kind of changed the conditions now and they are growing a lot faster. But uh, I will say another thing about propagation through pollination with a lot of these plants. And I can only talk about it because I've had it through one season of doing that, by the time you've got all the seeds and you've put all the seeds into a propagator, it might very well be the end of the summer, beginning of autumn. So that might be one that you might want to try attempting a bit of a heat mat for a while until they get established and then remove the heat mat basically and then they can grow. But I think that's probably why it's a bit of a slower growth coming into it as well. Because as you would imagine with the kind of locations that these plants are in, in the tropics, they probably don't get as much of a seasonal shift. So when something is pollinated and it drops as a seed, it can probably grow straight off the bat because the weather doesn't change. But with us, when we have much more intense seasonal changes between the summer months and the winter months, 
you can see where that's a bit of an issue basically. But yeah, I think that's everything I wanted to say about propagation. Let's move on to the next topic. So the next topic I want to talk about is availability. Now, eh, availability with this one, and I've given you a bit of information in the background that I bought it as something else. Now, looking back around that time when I was looking potentially for a crystallinum, they were around, they probably weren't around as much as they are now. And again, this is relevant to where I am, which is the UK, and I would imagine the EU is quite similar as well. But yeah, there was a few of them out there, not a huge, huge amount, but you could probably find them. I think I got mine on eBay, as I've mentioned, um, but they were around. I think with this one, it was a relatively mature seedling. It was still a seedling, but it was relatively mature mid to high double digits. I'm pretty sure at the moment there's a lot more of them out there, which I would also assume they'd be mid to low double digits now, at least here. So, and based on how quickly this plant grows, how easily, how easy it is to propagate via pollination, I would assume it's probably relatively easy to propagate via cutting, even though I've never tried it. Would assume why there's so many of these plants coming out there. And there is a demand for these plants because I'll bring it up again and I'll show you one of the more juvenile leaves if I can. Sorry, this is such an awkward plant to show. Um, that silveriness, which is a shame, it doesn't pick up. Now where I want the light, where it's been washing me out all day, it doesn't come out but the silveriness in the veins can be quite pronounced basically with this one. But uh, very, very, very cool, sorry. It's also attached itself to my microphone through the infrarescence. This is why I don't bring out this plant too often. But yeah, it's a plant that I think will become more, even more readily available because it's kind of cool. And I think it's that, it's a bit like the Clarinervium, that it's a bit of an easier anthurium to care for, but in my experience and in my opinion, it's slightly more interesting to look at than the Clarinervium because of that silveriness to the leaves, but also a bit of a robust plant. And I think generally the consensus from what I'm hearing from people is the same. It's that basically. If you disagree, let me know in the comments. Moving on to pests with this one. And I'm trying to think now if I've had any major pests on this. Other than the mealybugs, welcome back to the, the frequent viewers. Other than the kind of occasional mealybug, I don't think, maybe, I'm just looking at some of the damage on some of the older leaves, maybe some spider mites in the summer? No, there definitely was spider mites in the summer. So watch out for spider mites with this one, uh, especially if you get some of these larger leaves that will undulate rather than just being entirely flat. They will be when they first come out, but as they mature, they might get a bit of an undulation happening. At least that's what I'm finding with some of my larger leaf anthuriums, that's where you'll get the spider mites kind of hiding and growing. By no stretch of the imaginations will they decimate a plant quite quickly. I have seen spider mites go bonkers on things like alocasias and colocasias. With anthuriums, at least in my experience, especially with this one, it didn't grow into a difficult situation too quickly anyway. So. That tells you something there, but overall, not too bad in terms of pests. Moving on to final thoughts. Now, <laughs> uh, what I usually do with final thoughts is I usually answer one of the questions, which is knowing what I know now, would I repurchase this plant if I didn't have it? 100%, definitely. One of my easiest anthuriums for sure goes straight into big leaves relatively quickly. It's easy to pollinate. It's easy to create propagates from it in terms of seeds, at least in my experience. Wasn't hugely expensive. Very, very pretty foliage, especially with that silveriness as well. And you do get that wow factor with this plant. If you want an anthurium that's going to go big quite quickly, again, in my experience, this one is the one to maybe try. Um, and now in terms of the score, zero being the worst, 10 being the best, where would I place this? As a plant, as a whole, I would say a seven or an eight. It's quite a relatively easy plant. It's still an anthurium, so it can still be a bit fussy at times. 
for an Anthurium, I would probably go for a 9 or a 10 for this one. It's, for me, for me, <laughs> easier still than the Cl uh, Clarinervium, basically. And to be fair, I keep dissing the Clarinervium. It's just my experience, by the way. I, I know other people have had great successes with it. I think I struggle with plants that prefer to go dry too much. I overwater. I'm an overwaterer. I'm a hovering plant parrot, so this one does well with me. Even though I do let this dry out, this is like the 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 little plant in the corner that I keep forgetting and I water like, I think at the moment, just to give you an indication in the winter, this is getting water once every two weeks. So that gives you an indication. As you saw, and I'll bring it back up again, this is in my Aroid mix in a net pot and it's doing fine. And let me put it back down. But yeah, overall, very, very cool plant. Definitely would buy again and a relatively good beginner towards intermediate and theorem, I would say. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully you've got your own review that you can drop on this video. I think with some of these plants are a bit easier to find. I get more people leaving their own comments because more people have got them. But yeah, hopefully you've enjoyed. Hopefully I'll see you here soon. And I truly, truly hope that you have a great rest of your day. Thanks, bye.